Ambojo, the Nemagan attack, Nijoga by Tang Denigo, Wapskamegan Gan Denigo, a tech no tem, as a tech egg and bonji. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Calvin Redsky from a small community called uh, Show Lake 40. Um, today, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to share a little bit about the, uh, the sweat lodge uh, teachings. Um, when I was first introduced to this lodge, <clears throat> I was introduced to it by a gentleman uh, from back home, an elder, and uh, he had invite, invited me to, uh, <clears throat> to the fire, the sacred fire, as I, was, uh, as I was driving by in my bicycle, he had called me over. And uh, one of the things that I, I noticed right away was uh, language, our language. Was being, was being taught to me, and it was there was no real English being used, uh, and he called it uh, he had called it the uh, Matutsanen, the lodge. That's what they called it, Matutsanen. And uh, he wanted me to start somewhere as uh, one of my roles, and uh, one of my roles was to be Shkabez. And uh, the word in our language, Kabez, I had asked, what does, what does that mean? And they, they basically told me it meant uh, to be a firekeeper. And so I, uh, <clears throat> I got to learn a little bit about that language, what it meant, I kept asking, because I knew there was more to that word than just firekeeper. And what it meant was... Uh, to start learning how to behave, to start learning about uh, what, what we know today are uh, the seven grandfather teachings. They were uh, implement, implement, implemented to me through the medicine wheel teachings and uh, how we uh, go back in time of when we were babies, how we were in our mother's womb because that's what the sweat lodge represents is our mother's womb <clears throat> when she has the baby. And uh, one of the things that I will be sharing today when we do have that lodge is that uh, one of the first things we heard when we were inside our mother's womb, our grandmother's womb, was uh, the, uh, the heartbeat of our mother. And we never forget that sound. That's why we say, when we say our language, we talk about love. We talk about protection. Because that's what we say in Gisa Gigo, they say. Meaning that they were kind of like, it's kind of an expression where they say like, they were stingy of us. They held us tight, our mothers. They wanted us protected. And so they used that cedar as part of that lodge. And they call that, that second phase of that, that lodge, they call it that altar where all our sacred items are to be prayed for, whether it's our pipes, whether it's our eagle whistles, whether it's our food offerings, or whether it's our sacred uh, bundle bags or our eagle feathers. We can feast a lot of different things through that lodge. And in that lodge, there's uh, roles and responsibilities for everybody. And uh, when I grew up, <clears throat> I saw, like, for instance, like the women. The women's role was to get that, make that cedar water, prepare the food that was going to be eaten after the lodge. And the men's role, some of the men's role was to go get that firewood, to go get, to go get the rocks, to, uh, to make those birch bark bowls, to actually go get the cedar trees, to actually go do the physical labor that it took to make that lodge. And, it, and, it, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a hard, it's hard work building that lodge, and it's hard work. It's a big responsibility to take care of that lodge. So when we, we go back, when we heard that mother's heartbeat, the second thing, <clears throat> the second thing we saw and heard was the sound of water. 
And that was the thing that, that first, what they say, broke when, when we were coming into this world, was water broke. And it was part of that cleansing for our babies to, to purify themselves, to come into this world all natural, to be accepted as a natural gift from the Creator. They say the child chose the parents. It wasn't the parents who chose the child. So when we think about things like that, I'm taking you back to when you were a baby, to when you were born, to bring you back to one of those other, other teachings of humility, to teach you about respect, to teach you about the different medicines, to teach you about what they're for. And I utilize the grandfather rocks, the grandmother rocks that come into that lodge that are sitting in the fire, that are being heated. We'll usually heat them for an hour, maybe a couple hours, and then they'll come in to that lodge. That's the last phase of that lodge. A lot of the teachings came from that lodge. You know, it's listening to one of my friends earlier about the fire teachings and how he talked about the four directions, the four elements. In that lodge, you'll, you'll see that. And in that lodge, you'll have those, those uh, grandfathers and those grandmother teachings that are sitting in those four directions. And we don't just talk about the four directions in that lodge. We also talk about the, the ones that are above us. We talk about the atmosphere. We talk about the stars. We talk about the sun, the moon. We talk about, I always refer to Nana Kwe, the Milky Way has a very important uh, guidance up there. Lots of Anishinaabe when names up that way too. You get Indian names from up there. We talk about the four seasons. We talk about, uh, we talk about the four colors of human being. We talk about the four elements. We talk about uh, the things below us, all the little creatures that are on the ground, the ants, the, the, the little, uh, little critters that are walking around, and how much respect we should have for everything. Because when we leave, when we reach that age, when, we, when we're that baby and then we turn into that young, young youth, we should have certain teachings there. And those are the things that were forgotten. Those are the things that are being forgotten. And those are the things that are going to take, to what they say, seven generations to get back. Because a lot of our history is ugly from, from governments, from, from things like that, from a point of contact, if you will. That's when it all began. So that's where we go back into terms of how we, how we should be actually living. And what, what, what you see here in front of, front of me, what I'm sitting in front of, like the grandfather drum, the, the whistle, the, the pipe, the, another grandfather drum. <clears throat> they say that's what Anishinaabe looks like. All these beautiful things that we wear, the, the hand drums that are in the circle, the medicines that are in here, everything that's here. These things are shared by our two, whether it's a grandmother or a grandfather, we have to learn that balance of life, both from male and female in that lodge. And I'll explain more and more of that as we enter that lodge. And one of the things that I have in that lodge is uh, what we call a guizas, a benonji, they call them. It's a little water drum uh, that was gifted to me years ago. And uh, you know, we, uh, we earn these things through our, uh, where I'm from, we, we fast. That's what we do. That's what I was always told, just, just do your fast. And as I move out this way into different parts of the country, I learn to uh, accept and listen uh, the different teachings that are out there, but to leave those teachings over there. And that, that word in our language is pakan, uh, meaning different. Ajitaog, Anishinaabe, meaning that they live differently. And we leave that over there because that's not ours. So we, we do our fasting ceremonies, and that's, that's all we do. We, we fast on an island for four days, four nights. Some of us go for 
many, many other nights, maybe seven nights, eight nights, ten nights, and you begin to see, you begin to see the natural world. You begin to feel. Somebody talked about the senses, and that's, uh, I think, uh, Western society calls it deja vu, one of those senses. And we have that instinct in our, in our, in our ways too. And when I talked about computers this morning, we talked about that memory of a computer, how much it holds. We have that right here too. And when we have that, uh, that monitor to work, it's, it's right there, that monitor. And when we have those speakers, in order for it to hear, we have that here. And, and then that microphone that we talked to, we have it right here. All those different teachings come from that lodge. Everything comes from this drum. Everything is centered in there. That's why we carry these, these certain tools. And, that's, and like I say, I, I only know a, a little bit. I only know so much about that lodge. But one thing I do know, one thing I, I could say about that lodge is that, um, you know, um, there were many different types of different lodges growing up. I saw a turtle lodge. I saw a Magizi eagle lodge. I saw, <clears throat> I saw a bear lodge, and I seen a woman's, a woman's lodge. And I, when I first moved up this way, I always asked, what kind of lodge is this? I always was thinking about back home because of all the things that I was taught, all the things that I saw. There was always a purpose of how many rocks you were using. And today, the lodge that's going to be conducted is going to be an eagle, an eagle sweat. Which, which is 21 rocks. And that comes from my great uncle uh, um, from back home. And uh, he had talked about all those things to me, shared all those things with me, uh, especially the colors. We often wonder where we get our colors from. Uh, they come from the seasons. They come from dreams. They come from, uh, they come from what we observe, what we see. And we use those colors to protect ourselves, to dress ourselves. And uh, sometimes that's what our elders do to us, is they, they will dress us up and how they saw us during ceremony and through that sweat lodge. So that's, uh, that's one of my, what I'm going through right now is my colors, my new colors that are going forward. So there's many, um, again, uh, during the lodge, we, uh, we try to share uh, the most uh, basic uh, Teachings like people will say, well, what do I wear when I go to the sweat lodge? Well, you'll bring a first thing is you'll bring a towel because you're going to sweat. The other thing is you're going to bring something to wear like a shorts and like for the men, they'll wear shorts and sometimes it's, some of them will wear a t-shirt and that, that's it. And of course, you're going to sweat and you're going to use that towel to wipe yourself, your face, whatever you need it for. And sometimes when it gets too hot in there, you can cover yourself with that towel so that it's not too hot. And I try not to make it too hot. I try to make it as comfortable as I can because sometimes you never know. You never know when it's somebody's first time in that lodge. You might have somebody with 20 years experience and they can resist all the heat in the world, but you're in there praying. There's a lot of magical things that happen in that lodge, but you're praying is going towards the grandfathers and the grandmothers that are there for you. And there will always be somebody outside taking care of us. And that, that's that, what we call that chkabez, that fire keeper. So what the, some of the teachings that I'm going to give to you are very, very old teachings. And a lot of times we were told never to share, never to, uh, never to, um, never to publicize because those teachings are very sacred. And a lot of our people in our communities won't share a lot of these things because they, they keep them to pass it on to somebody that's going to come and ask. And that's why I always said there's always somebody sitting out there that has knowledge, that has different teachings. But one of the most important things is always offer your tobacco. And when you go to that lodge, always make an offering. Always make an offering because that energy that you bring and that prayer that you're asking for will be received. And it may not come right away. It might take years and years and years before you get that answer. I know for me, when I walked into that lodge, 
when I crawled into that lodge, I was told this word, Kichimami Tun, they said to me. I was wondering what that meant. It took me about 20, 28 years, almost 30 years, to go back to that medicine man and ask him what he meant by that word, Kimami Tun. And what he had said to me was that I was carrying, he had the gift of seeing that person's gifts just like that. And what he said to me was I was carrying so many gifts behind me when I walked in, but I didn't know my gifts. And it's a lifelong journey, is what it is. Lifelong journey, you're not gonna know everything. You'll never know everything. And that's one thing I accept. It's not that I won't know everything, but I, I, uh, I do my best. And, and, I, and, I, and I try to keep things very simple. When I run that lodge, I never try to change too much. I always try to keep it the same, try to be repetitive in what I do. And uh, that's, that's the reason why you'll see me say the same thing sometimes, and you'll hear the same thing sometimes, because you always say, oh, Calvin said that before. I've heard that Calvin say that. That's because I'm repetitive. I'm trying to show you something. And what, I'm, what I've done over the last couple of years now is try to teach the young ones the young boys about that fire, about that lodge. And then when I get the girls, I try to teach them about their responsibility, even though it's not my responsibility, I still try to show them that, like the importance of uh, life skills, you know, things like sewing, uh, you know, keeping, keeping things in order, because they said it, that, that, was the, that was the woman's role, was they were the, uh, they were the they were the foundation of everything to keep everything in to keep everything stabilized as a community and that's 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 if if without the women you know the there there wouldn't be we wouldn't be here you know because that woman gives such a powerful powerful uh, gift and uh, that's the gift of life is what they give so the lodge has taught me lots. I could sit here for hours and I could go on and on and on about that lodge. But to really truly learn about it is to participate in that lodge, not just to, not just to read books, not just to look at Google and watch videos, but to actually participate in that lodge. You will, you will learn from that lodge how powerful that spirit is in that lodge when you come there, when you participate in that lodge. And uh, there are uh, some teachings where, like from my community, is that you're on moon time. You know, you're, you're already at your, uh, at your time of uh, cleansing, your time of healing. Men, we don't go through that. We don't have that power of, of going through moon time. So we need, we need that. We need to smudge. We need to, we need to go to that lodge. We need to go in the bush all the time. Women need to rest when they're on that time. So that's why it's important that women don't participate there at that time, but they can come and sit around there at the lodge, but not to go in that lodge. And when you're in that lodge, you make sure you crawl in that lodge. You don't stand up in there, because I know some of these lodges are pretty, pretty tall. And uh, the lodges, when we used to be back home, they were very, very low. I don't see too many like that anymore, but they were very, very low. And there's 16 grandfathers there that sit on the outside, those, those posts that are sitting there, that's what that is. And there's 16 fathers in there, grandmothers and grandfathers sitting in there. So there's quite a, quite a bit of teachings in there. It'll be very dark in there. Um, <clears throat> today we're going to be participating. You know, one of the words I heard today was anxiety. I, I don't know how many times I heard that word today. Uh, it just so happens I, I, uh, I brought some uh, medicine today for anxiety, and I'll be using that in that lodge today. Um, so uh, I didn't realize, I just felt that this morning when I, when I woke up. I, I got my uh, guisance ready this morning and uh, the sun was just starting to rise. It was a beautiful, uh, beautiful morning. Uh, it reminded me of my own last name because the sky was red. And that's, that's my actual last name, Mishko uh, Gizik, Denigo. That's what it meant, red sky, and that's what I saw this morning. And when I thought about that, I was thinking about all the people that are going to be coming in, yeah, we work. Everything seems so fine and dandy that we have a job, we have a paycheck, but 
we really never truly know how people, what people are feeling or how people, what people are going through. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that, that I felt, uh, even personally. I, I know I need to go in there and uh, I will be uh, doing my offerings uh, after uh, when we get there. Uh, we'll be making our tobacco flags when we get there. Um, we've had our fire going now for a couple hours. You know, I thank the firekeeper for coming out today. Uh, it's not too many people that, that do things just by offering tobacco anymore. Sometimes it's got to be money. I didn't offer him anything yet, but I'll offer him gifts because he's working hard out there, that guy. And uh, so that'll be my uh, contribution to him. And also, like, don't forget when you go to these lodges, don't forget your four gifts when you come there. This is, this is how I learned a long time ago. I always bring a gift because it takes a lot of energy from that person that's conducting that lodge. Don't forget that. So I'll say uh, I'm not going to talk too much more. I know I like to ramble on a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's important that we uh, learn these teachings and you can't learn everything in one day. I know that. It's, it's a lifelong journey, lifelong learning experience. Um, so uh, I just want to say miigwech. Uh-huh.